Hi, everybody. My name is Gautam Thapar, and I'm a product manager on the Microsoft Dataverse team. I welcome you today to the session where we're going to talk about how Dataverse can be leveraged by professional developers like yourself to be able to build meaningful enterprise LOB applications. Today, I'm going to cover what Microsoft Dataverse is all about. Why did we build this service? How this service integrates well into our Azure ecosystem of applications. And then I'm going to go into some specifics about brand new capabilities that we've launched over the last couple of months, where you can now take some of what Microsoft Dataverse does for you and expand it out even more with things like the business events framework. Your ability to be able to take data that is external to Microsoft Dataverse and bring it in and make it feel like native to your applications. And finally, to end this all, we'll talk about how can you take the data that exists in Dataverse and be able to analyze it and draw some insights out of it, much like you're used to doing uh, in your organizations with your product managers and, and your uh, execs wanting some reports from you. So what is Microsoft Dataverse? At Microsoft, we are really about having organizations and individuals realize their full potential. So when the level playing field is, is really on that spectrum of anybody and everybody and organizations ranging from small to really large, we have to be able to offer them choice. So that's really where the Microsoft Dataverse product is rooted in. Microsoft Dataverse is a managed data platform that lets you easily structure heterogeneous data or variety of data that's coming from different sources and your business logic to be able to build interconnected applications and processes and do it in a way that's secure and compliant for your organization. Now that is quite a mouthful. So to be able to internalize what that effectively means, how about we really start with a scenario at hand? So today, let's think about digitally transforming Contoso's supply chain. Contoso is an organization that's already established a supply chain, but now they want to go ahead and add a bunch of capabilities to their existing applications. So we have a system that already does supply chain tracking. Let's go ahead and add a couple of capabilities to enable searching within their application or their product. And also, as we go through the product uh, journey itself, we want to be able to take some of the records that get created by customers and be able to show more details about them. Sounds pretty simple, right? Now let's look at what it effectively means when you build that application. So at the heart of the problem is that we have an existing app and source data that is already doing a bunch of tracking uh, for the supply chain. We want to add search capabilities to the product. So when we add these capabilities, we want to bring in data from the source database and put it into a relational database. There is some non-structured data and we want to be able to put them in files and blobs. To be able to search, we want to actually apply a search system and potentially go ahead and index the data as well. Now, all of this that we talked about is three different services or three different types of data that you're working with. To be able to coalesce all this together, we need to be able to put a web service on top of it so there's a single API that the app can talk to. As with any typical project that you work with, let's go ahead and throw in some last minute breaking changes. The product managers and your C-level execs want to actually add eventing and real-time semantics into the application. Additionally, they want to be able to report on exactly how the, the system is tracking the, the tickets across all the customers and the performance of the delivery system itself. Eventually, they want to be able to add more AI and analytics to the product as well, so they want to be able to take data from different sources across their variety of products and put some AI models on top of it and apply machine learning to gain some insights which offers them a competitive edge. Not a problem, right? We've got all this for you from within Microsoft Azure as a la carte services that you can potentially use. For your relational database needs, we have SQL Database or Azure, SQL Azure. 
for anything like files and blobs and unstructured storage, you could be using Azure Storage. For your search needs, you can actually go ahead and use Azure Search. And to coalesce all this together, you can put them behind one single API using API apps. For real-time semantics, you can actually go ahead and push all this data using our eventing system or a bunch of capabilities that we have across the variety of services from logic apps to service plus and stuff. And then for your reporting needs or your AI needs, you can visualize the data within products like Power BI, Azure Synapse, your data can live in Azure Data Factory or Data Lake, and you are able to sort of get it across a bunch of sources and make meaningful sense out of it. That kind of sums up the app per se, right? But let's think about this center box that we talk about where you're moving the data in. You have SQL database, you have Azure storage, you have disparate heterogeneous kind of storage needs for your application itself. And that's what really Dataverse is all about. To put that into context, in absence of that one central box in a unison, a professional developer like yourself, you need to be able to go across 10 different services, understand their API surfaces, different pricing models, which have very different scale constraints. You have to think about security and map it across all these new services that you're talking about. They have to play really nice with each other, so interoperability has to be managed within your application. And to sort of top it all, when you're monitoring or reporting on them, you have to thread the needle across all these services. Now, going back to the mission at Microsoft, in absence of a managed data storage platform, did we really provide you with the choice that lets you realize your full potential? That's where Dataverse comes in. Dataverse is a managed heterogeneous data platform that at the heart of it provides all these capabilities around security, logic, data, storage, and integration behind a single API surface. What does that mean? So on that single API, you have clients ranging from low code, no code tools like the Power Platform or professionally developed tools like the Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code products that we have, or our analytical capabilities through our products like Power BI, talking to the same API, but underneath the covers can actually span across a range of heterogeneous storage. So you have built-in capability for relational databases, you have files and blobs, you have log storage, you have semi-structured storage and storage in Cosmos DB, you have search, uh, relevant search built into the product itself. You have a managed data lake provided to you out of the box. So you don't have to learn five different API surfaces. Using the single API surface that we have available, you can actually go ahead and save all your data across these storage, capable, storage products. And when we talk about this being a managed data platform, we just don't stop at just giving you this heterogeneous storage. We think about what does it take for a professional developer to build their applications day in and day out. And the core tenants of what makes up an enterprise LOB application is what we give you out of the box. So for example, for your security needs, authentication, authorization, and auditing is built into the product itself using Azure Active Directory. When it comes to doing the most common operations and, and putting some logic in your, in your uh, data or in your in your actual business itself, you have business rules, you have workflows, you have async jobs. We can actually calculate and roll up fields based on logic that you put at runtime itself. And furthermore, if you would like to extend your application, we have the ability to act, write custom code in plugins that can be triggered at any point in your entire event pipeline. <clears throat> and to top it all, we don't stop at just giving you stuff at this managed data store itself. If something is not available to you or you would like to integrate with your existing systems, we have a very, very robust set of capabilities out of the box that let you integrate with capabilities in Azure, like sending an event to Event Hub, to Service Bus, or to a webhook. And on the other side of that pub sub model, you could actually subscribe to these and push uh, you know, your own code using Azure Functions or any other compute uh, service that you like. 
So you can see at the heart of it, what we really think about our secret sauce is to bring all these capabilities naturally to you so that the time to get started and time to sort of get to gratification is minimized as much as possible as opposed to doing everything a la carte. So going with Dataverse doesn't mean that you are not using Azure because Dataverse, all of it is built really on top of Azure capabilities itself. Like I pointed out before, our secret sauce is not to really think about building the infrastructure or platform services that our partners in our Azure organization have already done. We want to make sure that they keep evolving on those capabilities and we want to leverage them. The secret sauce that we want to bring to the table is to be able to normalize all those capabilities in a heterogeneous store and in a way that you don't have to deal with infrastructure, we do it for you. And while Dataverse uses Azure to provide all those capabilities, we do offer a no cliffs experience to our customers. What that means is because we are fundamentally built on top of Azure. If at any point in time you feel the need to extend it with your own custom logic or custom code or custom experiences or anything have you. You can extend the application with Azure. With our out of the box integrations, you can talk to any compute service. You can fire events and have them be handled by services like event top service bus and stuff and Furthermore, for analytics and stuff, you can use the plethora of services that we offer where you can apply insights or gain more analytics out of your data coming from, from disparate services. This means that the security, the performance, the compliance that you've come to expect out of Azure already is baked into Dataverse by default. Everything that you get with Azure, you get with Dataverse out of the box. So going to the next step, let's talk really about a couple of fundamental capabilities that are present in Microsoft Dataverse. So when you have this managed data service, how do you integrate that with data in Azure Apps? So let's start with integrating applications with Dataverse's OData API itself. So what we have is the OData v4 API. All the service, all the services that make up this heterogeneous platform that we talked about are exposed behind that single API surface. So all you need to know is that one API surface. And with that, you're able to do a whole bunch of things like CRUD on the data that you're actually putting in, setting up metadata, establishing business rules, create workflows, or extend your code if you had to. And all of this is done in a compliant manner because using, you're using Azure Active Directory at the heart of it. Once you've used Microsoft Dataverse, if you feel the need to actually go ahead and integrate with services outside of Dataverse, like I pointed out, we have a native capability for you to do that via our PubSub model to be able to push events into Azure Service Bus, Event Sub, Logic App, Power Automate, or simple webhook. On the other side of this pub sub, you can have any kind of application ranging from a desktop, mobile, web, or a SaaS app be able to pull from it and drive any kind of logic that you want to. Let's talk about how we integrate logic with Microsoft Dataverse. As I pointed out, there's a couple of inbuilt capabilities for you to be able to run logic. We let you extend your applications by extending your code with what we call plugins. And as the name suggests, this is really about writing your own code in .NET and be able to use that anywhere in the event pipeline itself and trigger your custom code. But if that doesn't work for you, you can leverage our event pipeline to be able to publish these events out and on the other side of it, have any kind of compute like Azure Functions, which is serverless, or for that matter, VMs or or containers from Azure Kubernetes itself. The choice is up to you completely. So how do you choose? The way we actually talk about this and, and sort of tell our customers is when you're doing something synchronous in your data event pipeline in the way the data is coming into the platform, choose plugins because it's native and it's closed. The work that we've done and the capabilities that we've exposed are very close to the data itself. 
So as the data comes in, we are able to run synchronous code for you automatically and be able to sort of provide outputs in the event pipeline itself. But if your needs are async, you can decide to choose plugins or functions or any other compute service that we talked about using our eventing structure. Extending the native capabilities of the platform, we recently launched a brand new capability called the Business Events Framework. This builds on the existing stuff and capabilities that we talked about from an eventing standpoint where you manage logic and automation within Dataverse. But the key with business events is that now you can do this with handling events that are generated external to Dataverse as opposed to internally. So what that effectively means is Dataverse can react to external events, but at the same end be able to route those external events using Azure Service Bus, Event Hub, Webhooks, or Power Automate to fire these events that you can now respond to both inside and outside of Dataverse if you had to. Business events by definition are catalog. So it allows for you to group these things together and be able to see what kind of things are available within your organization that people have published. So it makes discovery extremely easy. For our low code customers, we've already provided a custom action inside of our Power Automate Dataverse connector called when an action is performed. So this is a trigger that, that you can use to basically go listen to your business event and drive some logic after that. Business events are of a couple of types. As I talked about right now, a business event effectively is no different than the typical event that we fire from the platform today. So it has an action it's in, that we name. There are some request parameters, and those request parameters that basically came in are cataloged in a meaningful way, and you can have some async logic be triggered through it. Another kind of business event is custom API. So today, what we'll also demo to you is how to use a custom API like a business event. So what is a custom API effectively? It's effectively a named action itself, but it does have a request parameter in addition to response properties as well. So you have things coming in and things going out. You can have this custom API exist with synchronous plugin steps because you know that there is some request parameters that came in. You want to apply some sort of logic that you write yourself and execute that synchronously as the request came in and then respond accordingly. And if something were to go wrong, you want to be able to error out and cancel the entire transaction and roll back. So what we'll showcase to you today as part of some of our demos later is how you can use that custom API effectively as a business event. You won't have to worry so much about the response properties and so on, but effectively all the other aspects of the custom API will be pretty valid when we think about using this as a business event. The next big capability that we're going to talk about today is how you can virtualize external data in Dataverse. So what does that really mean? So your data may not actually exist in Dataverse because we recognize that organizations have systems and, and data services that span a broad range of capabilities and broad range of systems which are internal and external to the organization. With virtual tables, you can bring that external data into Microsoft Dataverse and make it feel that's native to the product itself, such that your client applications talk to it in the same manner that they would talk to Dataverse for its native tables. So how do we do that? We have what we call virtual table providers, and these providers help you sort of offer that abstraction between Dataverse on one side and external data sources on the other, where you do the push and pull of the data going back and forth. The data inside a Dataverse is only projecting the metadata or the schema in the way you're reflecting it back to the client apps, but the actual data continues to stay at source. So if you make a change to that virtual table by writing something to it, you will be able to push that data through the virtual tables back to the source. Anything else changes on the external data source itself, it syncs it back to the system too and is projected back into Dataverse. So your client applications feel like it's the same thing whether it's coming externally or internally. We have a bunch of virtual table providers that we put out of the box already. The first one is our OData provider. This basically ships out of the box and lets you put any OData based service behind it 
and you're now able to project it into Microsoft Dataverse as a native data source. We also have GAID, our custom data provider, where the onus of which service that you talk to, which API that you want to go after, basically lies on you. This effectively means that you are writing your own custom code that defines how you will go back and forth between that external data source and move data into or move the schema and virtualize it into Microsoft Dataverse. You're able to register this custom code action that we talked about or this custom provider that you wrote as a plugin uh, into Dataverse itself so you can execute it at any point that you want to. Most recently, we've also announced some more capabilities and providers in private preview. The first one is our Cosmos DB data provider. As the name suggests, this is an abstraction on top of Cosmos DB that lets you take your data that is external to Dataverse and actually sitting in Cosmos DB and be able to virtualize it in Dataverse. And finally, we've, we've recently private previewed our virtual connector provider. This is really a place where you can create virtual tables based on existing connections in Dataverse. So for example, you have a SQL server or you have other connectors that you're using in the Power Platform ecosystem. You can use the virtual connector provider to be able to talk to that connector infrastructure or the connector that you've already established and virtualize the data into Dataverse to make it feel more natural and more native. Today, as part of the demo that we will do, we will show you our virtual table capabilities where we are able to push the data that is external to Dataverse um, through the Dataverse system itself, and you'll see how the data prop propagates and shows up on this external data source. And finally, the last topic that I want to talk about today is how you can take all this data that exists in Dataverse and be able to meaningfully analyze it in products like Azure Synapse. We already had native capability in in Dataverse to be able to export the data out because we want to offer you a no clips experience. And you could do that by exporting data into products like Data Lake and then do your own AI insights on top of it. But with the with the Azure Synapse ecosystem, what we've basically seen is a lot of customers have started to do analytics and be able to munch data across multiple data sources and make meaningful sense out of it. So with this release, what we're also announcing today is your ability to take Dataverse data and continuously export that data into Azure Synapse um, without having to worry about doing it again and again. So you establish this export mechanism once, we will continue to do the export perpetually for you. So your ability to accelerate, uh, to your ability to get your insights is accelerated because you don't have to wait for the data to show up. It automatically will show up as it's written into the platform itself. So which means that you're able to get to your data in, in a much faster manner across multiple services and be able to go ahead and drive some insights out of it. And we'll demo some of that for you today as well. I'm almost at the end of the, the talk track about what Dataverse is all about, and I hope you've been able to realize the potential of what you can do with Microsoft Dataverse. To showcase that to you even better, I want to do a demo, and I'm helped by people from my team today Jim Daly, Srinath Kanan, and Sabine Nair are going to help us take us through an end-to-end -end scenario of showing you how Dataverse can be meaningfully used in uh, building business applications that work within the context of Dataverse and sometimes external to Dataverse where the data is sitting outside and also be able to go ahead and analyze the data and insights, draw insights out of it. The demo scenario is about Contoso, which has disparate systems that need to be integrated together. Contoso has a website which allows their customers to be able to open tickets for service. They use a SQL database where this ticket data actually resides, but they have other applications that may need to respond when a ticket, ticket is actually created in the system and drive some logic. And then finally, at the heart of it is again analytics in that the product managers in Contoso and people who are managing the system day to day want to be able to run some analytics and continuously improve the system. So for the solution, we will have three parts to the demo. The first part is how we take these external tickets that we talked about and feed them into Dataverse as business events. We will subscribe to these events and then push the data into the SQL database using virtual tables. So which means it's not native to Dataverse. And finally, we will use Azure Synapse 
to be able to analyze a report on this ticketing data. So with that, let me hand over to my colleague Jim Daly, who will take you through the first part of the demo with business events, and we'll roll along the rest of the parts along the way. Thanks, Scott, Tom. I'm going to talk a little bit about the business event that we created to uh, cover this scenario where the website will need to send data about customer tickets to Dataverse. So in order this to work, we're going to need a custom API business event. We're going to have to enable the external application to call this custom API. And then we're going to need to provide some logic to apply uh, when the business event occurs. So let's take a look at the Maker Portal where you can see I have a custom BE solution. And within this solution, I have a custom API called Customer Tickets Event that has two request parameters, one for an account and one for a ticket. And you also see that I have a plugin assembly uh, that is registered uh, to provide the logic. In Postman, I've got uh, 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 this uh, all configured, ready to send uh, this event. And you see I've got the name of the custom API. I have the account and the ticket data that's ready to send. Also, in the authorization, you'll see that I'm using uh, client credentials grant type. I need an auth token, a client ID, and a client secret, as well as a scope uh, to get the uh, authentication here. These values come from a uh, application registered in Azure Active Directory, where I can get information about the endpoints to get my auth token. Um, and I've created this My Service Principal app. Uh, within this, you can see that I have uh, set up a secret that I can use to call it. And I've set up API permissions, where I've given user impersonation privileges, delegated permission for Dynamics uh, CRM, which is the old name for uh, Dataverse. Going back to the Maker Portal, uh, one of the things I need to do is to create an application user. To do this, I go to Settings, Advanced Settings, and then I can select Security and choose Users. Oh, so you'll see a list of all the enabled users. And the trick here is that I have to select Application Users from the view. When I select New, it'll open up a form. And all I have to do is paste in the application ID. So you can see I've done this earlier. All I needed to do was fill in this field with the application ID and hit Save. Everything else is taken care of. However, I also need to go in and set security roles for this user. And one of the roles that I've created here is one specifically for this app. And it contains only the privileges that this app will need. So I've created the custom API. And I have an application user for my external app to use to call Dataverse. Now I need to associate some logic to the event. Like I said, we could do this using Flow. We could use this in other means. One of them is to use our built-in plugin uh, assembly uh, framework. So uh, what I've done here is I've created a uh, .NET Framework uh, class library project, which has a single type. And the type happens to have the same name as the uh, event. It's not necessarily, doesn't have to be that way. Uh, then. Uh, I go through the normal steps to create a plugin, which I can't won't go into depth here, but just uh, one of them is to establish the execution context, which allows you to examine the input parameters and make sure that they are all correct. Uh, then it can also uh, check and see whether or not there's an account number as part of the account that's passed in. That's required. If it isn't there, it will fail. Uh, so then we can associate the uh, account number to the ticket. Uh, and then we can begin to go through and uh, do a query where we're going to look for any accounts that have that account number. And so we do our query, we get the results, and then we check the results. And if the result is null, that means that there's no account with that account number. And so we can proceed to create a new account using the data that was passed in with the event. Uh, and then using the uh, information about the created account, we can associate that to the ticket and then create the ticket. Now, if the uh, uh, there is an existing account that already has that ID, we want to link it to it. So we use the matching account ID to relate that to the ticket. 
and then we create the ticket. After we build the assembly, we use the plugin registration tool to register the assembly. And you can see I have already done that here. I've uploaded uh, the assembly to the server where we, it has uh, pulled it apart and identified that it has one type that implements the iPlugin interface that's needed. And then for that particular type, uh, I have set up a step registration. So let's take a look at that. So you can see when you create a, a step registration, you associate it with a specific named message. And this is the one for the custom API. Uh, then you have a number of different options to, to set here. But the most important one here is the pip pipeline stage of execution. Uh, the custom business events need to be in the post-operation stage, and they must be asynchronous. In fact, if I were to try and set it asynchronous, it would fail. So it must be asynchronous because of the way I've configured the custom API. And uh, I'm not going to delete this in case I need to show it to you. OK. All right. Now that I have uh, everything registered, I'm going to go ahead and use Postman to simulate the website and send the request out. It'll return a 204. It means it was accepted. It uh, didn't return any value. So now I can go into a model-driven app, and I can see the active accounts view. And if I refresh this, there we go. There's the record that I created. I can open that and uh, click on the related tab and see any of the tickets related. And that shows the ticket that was created through the uh, plugin registered to the asynchronous step of the business event. So Srinath is going to talk a little bit more about uh, the ticket table. Uh, so this is a virtual table. So Srinath, take it away. Thank you, Jim. That was a great demo to show how business events in uh, Dataverse can be used to digitize and automate business process. Uh, it's even more powerful when we are able to use data sitting externally from Dataverse into stitching the end-to-end -end business processes. So let me take a few minutes now to talk a little bit more about the, the tickets table that we have here, which is set up in Dataverse as a virtual table. So let me uh, go back and uh, show how this is set up um, so that uh, others can benefit from using the many providers that we ship in Dataverse to actually set up uh, virtual tables. So for that, the first thing I want to talk about is really showing where the data is. So in this case, the ticketing system is actually external to Dataverse and it's residing in a SQL server. And I have a table here which has um, you know, five columns. I have a ticket ID, which is a primary key. I have a field that is used to capture the description for the ticket itself. Then there's a column that has a severity. And in this example, we are actually showcasing how these tickets are associated to specific uh, accounts. Uh, which is set up as a native entity in the Dataverse. And so I have two fields representing uh, a way for me to actually link these tickets back to the accounts in Dataverse. So I have the account ID, which essentially is the key that we will be using to create the relationship with the virtual table. And of course, there's the account number. Now, this information is important as uh, we are setting this up because we are using the custom connector, which means it's a pro dev scenario where we will be able to create the necessary plugins that uh, one wants to enable on top of this uh, you know, virtual entity. Uh, in this case, I have enabled a full CRUD operation on the ticket. So we will be creating uh, plugins for create, update, delete, retrieve multiple, and uh, retrieve plugins. So once you have this um, um, coded and you've been able to successfully compile this, this should give you a library, which will then you can use within the plugin registration tool connecting to this environment to register both the assembly and then set up the provider that will help you with the definition of the virtual tables in Dataverse. So what you're seeing here is basically I have the um, DLL and I've registered that in this particular Dataverse environment. And then I've gone ahead and created a data source for this, which now has those registered um, plugins uh, recorded into Dataverse and it's available for use. So with this now set up, we can then go into our portal and actually go customize and then set up the virtual table itself. So 
the view here is showing you how the virtual table is defined. So I've defined it as tickets and it it maps back to the table that is in my external data source. In this case, it's called contest or demo table. And I've also defined those five fields here with the ticket ID being the primary key. And then you can see the rest of the uh, you know, matching uh, columns from my external data source. The important aspect of this is the fact that now we've enabled uh, full relationships across uh, you know, native entities and virtual tables and also a uh, full relationship between virtual tables that are created using the same provider. So in this instance, we are creating the join between the accounts entity. So if we go into accounts, since each account can have um, you know, oneness to end relationship, we actually have defined uh, a relationship here that maps back to uh, the ability to create an, account, create an account and create many tickets and associate those uh, tickets to this account. So this is what uh, we saw uh, when uh, Jim presented uh, his walkthrough where I have the tickets um, virtual table that is pulling in and showing you all the tickets uh, that are stored within that external ticketing system. But we can also go into specific accounts and click on those account details and see the related tickets and they're able to see the tickets that are specific to matching to those accounts. Now we can see the power of how we've been able to bring an externally stored information, integrating that right into Dataverse. And uh, the value extends beyond this with over time, a lot of these tickets being created across the accounts that this organization supports. There's a natural you know, need for understanding more about the data and get insights from this data. For that, I would love to hand it over to Sabine, who will walk you through how we've enabled easy and seamless integration between Azure Synapse and Dataverse to actually uh, you know, get more insights from the data that's being created here. Sabine, over to you. Thanks, Sina. My name is Sabine Nair. I'm a program manager in the Dataverse team. I'm going to show you how you can use the Azure Synapse link for Dataverse to take the Dataverse data to Synapse and generate insights. Now, Jim and Sheena just showed you how they got ticket data using virtual tables from an external source. Now, Contoso also has survey data against these tickets, which basically shows the customer satisfaction, whether they are satisfied, very satisfied or, or not, against these ticket data. So we're going to join these two data in Synapse using the Spark feature of Synapse and generate insights from it. So let's take a quick peek at the ticket data. We, are, we see name, ticket ID, account, and account number. We identified ticket ID as a common column for both the data sources, and we'll use that to join in Synapse. So the experience starts with the Power Apps Maker portal. On the left-hand pane, you'll see the Azure Synapse link or Azure Synapse link for Dataverse. Our goal is within a few steps, link your Dataverse environment to Synapse workspace and push the ticket data to Synapse. So you start with new link to Data Lake. On the, you'll see a little checkbox to enable your preview, connect your Azure Synapse Analytics workspace. You provide your subscription here based on your credentials. We auto populate all the subscriptions and you can pick from the list, specify your resource group, and then it automatically should populate the workspace name, the Azure Synapse workspace name, and select a storage account under it. In this case, there's only one, otherwise you could pick the specific storage account. Hit next. Now you see all the tables in uh, Dataverse showing up here, standard or custom. We are interested in the ticket table, so we'll pick that and you hit save. At this point, it's creating the file system behind the scenes and pushing the data from Dataverse to Synapse. So as you can tell, we just pushed 635 rows of ticket data to the data lake associated with Synapse. I can click on a shortcut to directly launch Synapse from the Power Apps portal. And here I navigate to the ticket table and launch the Spark notebook to do my data preparation and visualization. Now for demo purposes, I'm using a pre-created notebook called Build Spark Demo. Now a cool thing in Spark is it lets you run different code cells in different languages. Here I'm using Python to basically read the survey response, the external data, and make it available as the Spark data frame. I'm also using SQL to query against this data, limited to like 10 in this case. 
uh, I'm also going to join, this is the place where I join the data from Dataverse and the external data and join it on the table ID. And finally, I write that new data into a new table. So let's go ahead and unlock some insights and also visualize them. Now, it's because we were able to join the ticket data from Dataverse and server response data from external, I'm now able to see easily the distribution of tickets against various severity. For example, SEV1 has 198 tickets, so that is a cause of concern for me. Now, overall, if you recall, our goal was to understand customer satisfaction against survey response. More specifically, who are my top 10 customers with the most number of tickets, but also uh, dissatisfied with their experience. So here I can tell uh, account number 10,001 is is uh, not happy at all and i may want to take some extra actions i may want to uh, proactively reach out to them and offer additional services to recover the customer end of the day insights should lead to actions now i could also visualize these insights by using the chart functionality in spark uh, here's an example of a bar chart i could just as easily change it to a pie chart and visualize the same insights so here's an example of how we could take the data from Dataverse using the Azure Synapse link, get it to Synapse, join it with external data using the Spark feature, transform the data and generate insights. Now, I could also pipe this up to a Power BI dashboard in direct query mode. That was always, always an option. But here's an example of what we do with Spark. Hope this was helpful. Thank you. And with that, I hope we were able to showcase the power of Dataverse to you and how you can use it to build meaningful applications. And to take the first step in making your journey even more productive, what we announced at the keynote of Build is a free to dev test of Power Apps and Dataverse license that you can go sign up today. So the links on the screen, you can go to aka.ms Power Apps Dev Plan and sign up for this Power Apps developer plan, which gives you a Dataverse instance to be able to go test and dev your products out. In fact, you can get up to three developer environments and be able to go have your entire application lifecycle, be able to build your applications, graduate them from one, one environment to another if you had to, invite others to collaboratively partake into developing this application for you. And once you feel comfortable with the product itself, Please go ahead and upgrade at that point. And to recap, today we talked about Dataverse as a managed data platform that supports all your data needs and that to behind a single API. So you need not worry about learning n different API surfaces. It does that in a manner that removes the barrier to entry because we build Microsoft Dataverse with, a, with an eye to what the core tenants of enterprise applications are and then provide those things to you out of the box to get started extremely quickly, like authorization, like authentication, like auditing, like workflows, and so on. If everything works for you, all in good within, within Dataverse. But for some reason, you want to move your data out, we offer you capabilities to move the data in and out without any friction. Dataverse is extensible, so there's a no cliffs functionality in that you can think about exporting your data or triggering events outside of the system, which can be subscribed to by any or any compute logic, whether it lives in Azure or your own proprietary systems. And today, we also finished by talking about how you can use Dataverse data to be able to draw meaningful insights. We enable lots of products like Power BI and Azure Synapse to be able to you know, take the Dataverse data if you want to use it by itself or bring data, data across other systems as well into the mix and be able to draw insights out of it. Hopefully you've been able to see what the power of Microsoft Dataverse is all about, and I can't wait for you to go test it out and give us feedback. So to end it all, if you have any questions, you can always tweet me at Gotham Topper, and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to respond to you in a meaningful time frame. Thank you so much for listening to me today. I hope you enjoyed the session and have a really, really great rest of the build.